Today, we're going to be thinking about another one of the Bible, what? Somebody give me the answer. Bible, what? What are we looking at in the Bible? We're looking at... Animals. You've got it, Horatio. Well done. Animals. We're looking at animals. Now, we're also going to be looking at this. I've got a question. Where is your home? And that's my question. Where is your home? So here we are. It says this. There is one animal, and the Bible says there are four animals. These four animals, we're not going to talk about all of them. We're only going to talk about one of them. These four animals are exceedingly wise. They're only small. They're only a little folk. But these are exceedingly wise. Now, we've got one of them we're going to pick out. And they are called the conies. Now, I wonder, who's heard of a cony here? Well, ooh, Eliza has heard of a cony. A cony. I, I, I don't think there's many people who could exactly say what a cony was. Maybe they would think it's more like a, a smallish sort of guinea pig. Who's heard of a guinea pig? Guinea pig? No? Yes? Maybe you've got, I don't know. Maybe uh, we've got them at home. Um, they're not actually related to guinea pigs at all. It's, 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 they're a completely different creature. But they sort of look like a guinea pig, okay? Now, here's what they look like. But first of all, it says this. The Bible says this. The conies, these conies are but a feeble folk, yet they make their houses or their homes in the rocks. So these animals live in the rocks. Now let's have a look at what they are. There you are. Oh, aren't they sweet? Aren't they sweet? Well, um, they're also called rock badgers. It's not as necessarily sweet. Or hyraxes. So these are, these are little creatures. They live in the deserty areas. So in, in Israel, in the Bible, that's where they live. And also in Africa and all the other places. And they're quite, they're quite a feeble folk. Um, you know, uh, these, pe- these little um, badgers, they make their houses in the rocks, okay? Why do you think they might make their house inside a rock? Any ideas? Why might they make their house inside a rock? Any ideas? Go on. Why, why would they not make it in the middle of the desert? Uh, well, maybe just, or I don't know, um, somewhere without any shelter. Why would they make it in a rock? No ideas. Well, I'll tell, you, I'll tell you why. It's because rocks, they don't really change. I mean, they do change over the course of time, but for all intents and purposes, throughout the Hyrax's life, they don't really change, and they can run in. They are safe, okay? Now, here we are. Here we've got some more Hyraxes, some more conies. Here are the conies, okay? Now, are they safe, do you think? Put your hands up if you think they're safe. What if I was to show you a picture of an animal? Do you think those conies are safe now? Uh-uh. No, they are not safe. There's a nasty eagle thing, and it's looking at them. Look, it's look, it's beady eyes on them. Look, it's going to catch them. Look, there we are. All right. Okay. What do you think the hyraxes are going to do? What do you think these conies are going to do? What they, Eliza, go on. What are they going to do? Okay, so th- this, this eagle is going to grab the conies. Okay, but what are the conies going to do? Can the conies fight? Have they got anything to fight with? Not really. They, they're just a feeble folk, aren't they? They've not got any big teeth. They've not got big claws. They can't fight the, they can't fight the eagle. So what do you think they're going to do? Eliza, go on. Scratch. They're going to scratch. Okay, they're scratch on the floor. Not necessarily. You know what they're going to do? They're going to run. Okay, they're going to run for their life. Okay, they're going to run and they're going to shelter underneath the rock. Okay, so they're going to go underneath that rock. Can the bird get them underneath the rock? No. no. Okay, so are they safe underneath the rock? Okay, now, children, these hierarchs, God has given these animals what's called wisdom. They are exceedingly wise. You know why? Because God has put into their minds and into their hearts to run and get inside the rock when there's danger around. Now, it's the same thing for us. In our lives, we have got, the Bible says that we must make what's called God our rock and our refuge. There's a little psalm which says this. It says this. I will love you, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress, my deliverer, my God, my strength, in whom I will trust. It also goes on to say, he is my stronghold. Do you think a stronghold is a safe place to be? Put your hand up. If you think a stronghold is a safe place to be, I think it's a safe place to be. And you know what it says this? How do we make God to be our rock? How can we be safe? Because God has promised that if we make him our rock, he will will give us heaven. He will make us safe. He will make us so that we can know him when we die. 
And actually, we won't be punished for the sins like he's promised to do. So he says this, how do you become, how do you get inside the rock? How do you become safe? You've got to run to him. It says this, I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemies. Now, the Bible says this, it says this, it's quite a serious thing. It's very serious. It says this, that we do have an enemy. He's called the enemy of souls, who's called the devil. Now, sometimes in the Bible, it makes the devil uh, out to be like a bird who comes and snatches, okay? Um, now, he's after souls. You see, he wants to deceive people into thinking that there isn't a God, into thinking that actually we're just here and we can do what we like ourselves without any thought for God. And you see, that's, and eventually, if, if he deceives us into thinking that way, we get, end up being lost and away from God when we die. But God says this, come to me and be saved. Come, run, run into the rock, okay, that is higher than I. So shall I be saved from my enemies, okay? Now, I've got one more thing. Let's finish off with this. We've got one more thing, okay? One more thing. The Lord Jesus came from heaven. Where, what was Jesus' home, do you think? What was Jesus' actual home? What was his home? Somebody help me out. I, I can't remember. I've forgotten. What was his, where's, his, where's Jesus' home? Up there in heaven. Yes, well done. It's in heaven. Jesus' home is heaven. Now, you know what? Jesus gave up his home completely in heaven. A much better place than this place. Okay? He came down... And what Jesus said was this, foxes have holes, birds have their nests, but the son of man, that's Jesus, has nowhere to lay his head. Jesus didn't have a home. In fact, when he came into this life, he was born a baby. Can you remember, did the, was there a home for Jesus? Where was he born? Was he born into a home or was he born somewhere else? Where was he born? In an inn. Was he actually born in the inn or was he born outside of the, in, outside of the inn? Where was it? Go on. In a stable, you got it. Jesus Christ, he came to be homeless. Jesus Christ came to be homeless. Why? For us. He didn't have anywhere. He didn't have a home to run to. There's no home in this life. And you know what? There's a little thing I'm going to finish off with. There's a little verse which comes from the children's song at Christmas. And it says this. No room for the baby at Bethlehem's inn. Only a cattle shed. No home on this earth for the dear son of God. Nowhere to lay his head. Can you imagine that? God had nowhere to lay his head. Only a cross did they give to our Lord. Only a borrowed tomb. Today, he is seeking Sorry, for <coughs> a place in your heart. You still, will you still say to him, no room. You know, you've got to put your life, trust in Christ. You've got to put your hope in God. Okay? Run to him. Call out to him. Make him your rock and you'll be saved. There we are. Okay, time for the memory verse.